Hello, this is John Armwood on the Armwood Opinion Channel here on YouTube. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, if you enjoy these videos, check the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm bringing you political content mixed with some culture and technology. And we are going through a very tumultuous, chaotic period in American history. Reminds me a lot of the early and mid 70s, around 73, 70, yeah, it's 72, 73, 74, around that period during the time of the Nixon impeachment. In this video, we're going to give an update as to what is going on and what is likely to happen in the impeachment process of President, President Donald Trump. I know many of us, you know, we get a little tired of all the coverage on it, and I get that. But this is important stuff that we need to know. So let's keep it real s simple. The President of the United States has admitted to asking the president of the independent republic of the Ukraine for a favor in exchange for monies that were appropriated by the U.S. Congress, passed by the House of Representatives, passed by the Senate and signed by the president, military aid to help the Ukraine fight its war with Russia. Russia annexed part of the Crimea, a region of the Ukraine, approximately four or five years ago, 2014, I believe to be exact. And since then, Russia and Ukraine have been fighting a war on the border. Ukraine is fighting, of course, to get its territory back. The United States has been since 2014 supporting them and giving them military aid. President Trump asked President Zelensky of the Ukraine to get dirt on Biden and his son, Hunter Biden, who worked for a while for a company based in the Ukraine. This dirt thing is not real. There is no scandal. But the Trump administration, led by Donald Trump, asked him to find dirt. There's a, there's a phone call with a transcript which, says, which, which Donald Trump specifically says that he is asking for a favor after the Ukrainian president asked about some missiles, javelin missiles. The next sentence, it's 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 we crazy. begin this hour in Washington after mounting pressure. The White House today released a transcript of a call between Donald Trump and the president of Ukraine. The July conversation is at the center of a major controversy. In it, Trump asks Ukraine's president to help him investigate political rival Joe Biden. Asked about the transcript's release, Trump dismissed the whole thing as nothing. Uh, just so you understand, it's the single greatest witch hunt in American history, probably in history, but in American history. It's a disgraceful thing. Uh, the letter was a great letter, meaning the letter revealing the call. Uh, that was done at the insistence of myself and other people that read it. It was a friendly letter. There was no pressure. The way you had that built up, that call, it was going to be the call from hell. It turned out to be a nothing call. 
So Trump doesn't think the call was a big deal, but Democrats believe it was a serious abuse of power. And they've opened an impeachment inquiry. The CBC's Ellen Morrow is watching all this and joins me now from Washington. So what does this transcript tell us, Ellen? Well, Andrew, it's important to point out that this is not a verbatim transcript of this call. It's described as a memorandum. Basically, it's based on notes that were made by staff uh, in the room or listening to this call as it happened. Now, there are some really important parts, though, in terms of what we do know was said. We can show you some of them now. Uh, the president is talking about uh, what the U.S. has done for Ukraine, saying, I will say that we do a lot for Ukraine. We spend a lot of effort and a lot of time. The United States has been very good to Ukraine. So that's the context of the beginning of the conversation. The president, uh, shortly after saying those words, then goes on to say, I would like you to do us a favor, though, because our country has been through a lot and Ukraine knows a lot about it. Going on to then say a, a little while after that, I need a fa I would like a favor. The president saying there's a lot of talk about Biden's son, that Biden stopped the prosecution and a lot of people want to find out about that. So whatever you can do with the attorney general would be great. Then saying Biden went around bragging that he stopped the prosecution. So if you can look into it, dot, 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 it sounds horrible to me. So just to go through through that, Andrew, again, you have Donald Trump sort of setting up this context. We've done a lot for you, going on to say we would like a favor, going on to talk about the wanting this looked at in terms of an investigation into Biden and Biden's family. That's an important dot, dot, dot uh, in that last phrase we showed you saying, can you, uh, if you can look into it, we don't know what was said between that and the president saying it sounds horrible to me. Now, there's going to be a lot of talk about whether or not there is a quid pro pro quo uh, in this conversation. There is no direct quid pro quo. The president is saying, you know, is not saying we will do this if you do this for us. But there is a lot of talk before the president asks for this favor about what the United States, uh, the president says, has done for Ukraine. So what's the reaction there on Capitol Hill? Well, not surprisingly, uh, there's been a fierce reaction from both sides. Several prominent Democrats have come forward saying that this call is the smoking gun, that the president abused his power, that he was asking a foreign government to help him uh, dig up dirt on someone who could become his main political ally, Joe Biden. We heard a short time ago from Chairman of the House Intelligence uh, com Committee, Adam Schiff, who likened Donald Trump to a mob boss. Here's what Schiff had to say. This is how a mafia boss talks. What have you done for us? We've done so much for you, but there's not much reciprocity. I have a favor I want to ask you. And what is that favor? Of course, the favor is to investigate his political rival. Well, we find out later on that Secretary of State Pompeo, who said he knew nothing about the conversation with, between Trump and the president of the Ukraine, was on the call. He lied to WABC News saying that he didn't know anything about it when he was listening on the call. We find out that Vice President Pence was in the Ukraine, was in, went to Kiev, and was involved in discussions with Zelensky, too. He knew about it, and he had indicated he lied and said he didn't know about it. So we have three people in the American government who have been involved in the extortion of a foreign president using taxpayer money to get dirt on the leading candidate for most of the past year in the polls and during the period that they were doing this for the Democratic nomination for the presidency, the opposition party. This is illegal in so many ways. Number one, extortion is a crime under U.S. law. Number two, it violates campaign finance law. Number three, it's tantamount to treason. It's acting against the interest of the United States. The Ukraine is an ally of the United States. 
Russia is an enemy. And we've seen a whole pattern since prior to Trump's election of him cozying up and praising the leader of Russia, Vladimir Putin. So this finally prompted Nancy Pelosi to start a formal impeachment inquiry. All year, I've been saying it's necessary. Since really March, when the Mueller report came out, which outlined 10 cases of obstruction of justice. Whistleblower, <clears throat> under the U.S. whistleblower statute, filed a complaint, complaining about the contents of the phone call and the extortion. The justice, it went to the Justice Department, and the Justice Department under William Barr said there was nothing there. It wasn't a campaign finance violation, which it is. It didn't mention the other crimes involved. So we're talking about the President of the United States, the Vice President, the Secretary of State, and the Attorney General conspiring to get dirt on the former Vice President of the United States to benefit the current president in his campaign for re-election. This is a central case example of what Alexander Hamilton talked about in Federalist Paper number 65. And it goes all the way up to Federalist 69 where he talks about impeachment and what impeachment is for. It's for high crimes and misdemeanors. Clearly, this is a, a number of felonies. It's also obstruction of justice. And there's also obstruction of justice. Lying about the conversation, covering up the, 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 the transcripts of the conversation. In fact, they were put on a secure server, which was only meant for the highest classified information when it should have been on the general server because they were trying to cover up what happened. This is all obstruction of justice, another felony. All of these men, let me repeat it, Trump, Pence, Barr, and Pompeo, Trump, Pence, Barr, and Pompeo how are felons. They have committed a felony. They need to be impeached from office and prosecuted and jailed. This reminds me of my college years when it was Holdem and Ehrlichman, Mitchell and Dean, as Gil Scott Heron sung in his poetry over music. It follows a pattern if you dig what I mean. And this was the Watergate scandal with Nixon. The parallels have gotten very, very close. This is Watergate redux. This is happening all again. So folks, that's basically what it is. Most Republicans are remaining silent Defenders of President Trump are throwing up smoke, saying there was no quid quo, plo, quo, quid quo pro, which is an exchange directly of one thing for another. That's not what extortion requires. Extortion requires demanding something in return for something that someone is due or it's theirs. That's what happened. This, this money was appropriated by Congress, signed by the president, and the delivery was held up to get a personal favor for President Trump. Real simple, folks. Trump, Pence, Pompeo, and William Barr 
must be removed from office and prosecuted. It's real simple. Okay, I'm going to stop here. You guys have a good day. And hit the like button once again if you like it. Hit the dislike button twice if you didn't like it. Um, paraphrasing um, Gerald Undone, one of my favorite YouTubers. Um, he always says that on his channel, Gerald Undone's channel. Anyway, I will see you in the next video. Resistance is not futile. Remember that. Resistance is not futile.